Hello everyone, today I bring you round 5 of Les Chess Open. This round I got paired up against Joaquim Moreira, a Spanish player with 1364 ELO. Uh, let's see how the game went. He had the white pieces, I had the black pieces, my opponent started with e4. I went d5, the Scandinavian takes on d5, queen takes, and here my pawn strikes with d4. Here, this move is already like a, a little bit of sideline, the most... Uh, critical move is knight c3 getting a tempo on the queen and asking her where she wants to go but okay d4 is playable here i go e5 striking immediately in the center and we get this position without queens we get this queenless middle game where okay i'm down a pawn but i have a lead in development and uh, this king will have to waste a lot of time in the future moving around because it can't castle anymore so okay i already um enjoyed my position a lot and uh yeah this is uh very very good for black in my opinion bishop b5 here by my opponent i go bishop d7 defending the knight and here uh my opponent defends the pawn on e5 with bishop f4 i long castle and here my opponent plays knight d2 so it's important to note that after long castle by me i'm already threatening uh, a couple of uh, nasty moves for example if my opponent just develops the knight to f3 which looks very natural here i already have quite a, a good move with bishop h3 check with uh, this discover check and this is already uh, a little bit awkward for white to deal with because you know the only move to not lose a lot of material is uh, knight fd2 because now i get bishop takes on g2 rook g1 and just bishop d5 and this position is already uh wonderful for black you know i regained the material and uh, yeah uh white's coordination of pieces feels very very weird and i have some natural moves that i can do next and yeah, this would already be uh, very, very pleasant for, for black. But okay, knight d2 defends from the discovered uh, check, which is a nice move. Here, I take on e5. So yeah, here, pretty much the best move is to trade the light square bishops with this, which is what happened in the game. I mean, you can take here on e5, but after bishop takes on b5, this wouldn't be... Uh, as good because at the end of the day you know i have really easy development here i have the bishop pair and this position is already very unpleasant for for white for sure with this spin still being very active yeah you really don't want to allow me to keep the bishop here in this type of position so okay my opponent uh trades bishops on d7 knight d7 knight f3 and here bishop c5 and yeah we have um you know pretty much uh equal position uh white gained some lead in development but the king is still in the center so yeah it's a very balanced position very you know equal but uh, it's still interesting in my opinion um here okay i'm attacking the pawn on f2 and here my pawn plays knight g5 so making a counter attack on f7 you know threatening to take the pawn and also fork my two rooks so i have to address that uh, threat i play knight h6 defending f7 and here my opponent uh, plays knight uh, 3 4 knight from g3 4 attacking my bishop and i do a counter attack with knight g4 so even though we don't have queens on the board there's still a lot of tactics and a lot of tricks in this position and it's definitely not that simple to defend against uh, all these threats you know engine already prefers white uh, black excuse me quite a lot with the uh, evaluation of minus 0 0.5 and yeah it's tough so i mean my opponent played knight takes on c5 which is definitely a, a playable move here i just capture back on c5 i mean there were other options i'm attacking uh, f2 twice you know threatening a fork so my opponent could play um rook f1 here i would just develop the rook from h to e8 and yeah we have a very actually 
you know, tough position for, for white because the king, this king is still in the middle. This rook is still not playing and my rooks are very well placed and I have some pressure already on the position. But okay, my opponent uh, took the bishop, which is uh, a nice move. Knight takes on c5 and here my opponent played uh, king e2. Rooks uh, makes sense and probably just trying to, you know, castle the king manually. Here, I just give a check on e8, very natural, and yeah, the problem with this is that um, king e2, I mean, makes sense, but the problem is that white is not really in time to play um, a move like uh, king f1, because this would just um, lose on the spot, honestly, like knight e6, and now this bishop you know, that is protecting this uh, knight is attacked and it doesn't really have squares to keep itself alive on this diagonal. So yeah, this will already win a piece and win the game. So yeah, my opponent is kind of forced to play uh, king f3 or bishop e3, but this looks very bad. Bishop e3, this looks horrible. Just f5, you know, threatening f4. And yeah, this is not pleasant at all. But, uh, okay, my opponent plays king f3, and yeah, this king is just in no man's place. Uh, it's not well placed on f3, to say the least, but uh, at least it's active, I guess. Uh, here I play knight e5, check. Uh, you know, and we trade into this um, endgame where, I mean, it's probably still equal, around equal, but uh, if someone has a slight advantage, it has to be uh, black for sure. Here my opponent uh, plays knight c4, makes sense because this knight was attacked, it had to move. Knight c4 attacking the rook on e5, and here I play rook f5 check, which, you know, I don't know if it was necessary, maybe I could have just gone uh, rook d5 here and it would be fine, but I don't know, I don't remember why I decided to give a check. Maybe the opponent goes king e2, and I go knight e6 check. And yeah, I'm just uh, threatening to play a knight d4 check, or even maybe um, knight f4 check. Like, you know, just maneuvering this knight to a better uh, square. Here my opponent plays f3, you know, making some uh, space for his king on f2. I go rook d5. Now I think what white would want to do is to play something like rook a d1 to try to just uh, get rid of this pressure on the position. And um, this would be nice, but it doesn't work for a simple reason, knight f4 check. And now this king has to disconnect from this rook. Let's say the king goes to e3 to attack the knight here i can pick up this pawn with the uh, knight takes g2 check making the king move again uh, if the king goes back to e2 knight f4 check uh, king e3 and i just trade rooks like this but you know i don't even have to do uh, this kind of stuff i can literally just play uh, rook takes on d1 uh, you know my opponent saw that he couldn't play uh, rook d1, so he played uh, king f2, which is very slow. But then again, it's very hard already to play this position with white. I just kick the knight with b5, knight e3. Attacking the rook on d5. Here I give a check, infiltrating the second rank. King g3, again, moving uh, the king to the first rank is definitely not what my opponent wants. And it's definitely not a good idea. King g3. And now a simple move like um, knight d4 is uh, it's nice because I am uh, threatening to win this pawn on um, c2. And here, you know, same thing. If uh, my opponent decides to play uh, rook d1, trying to trade pieces, you know, trying to alleviate his position now, we get uh, a nice tactic, a little bit different, but we have knight f5 check, deflection. Pretty much I'm attacking um, the king and this knight. So if my opponent trades, of course, it loses the exchange. And this is, even though I don't win this knight here, uh, this com 
position is completely winning with the next change up and my rook so active. Uh, yeah, white would just be toast here. And if my opponent uh, goes king f4, it's pretty much the same. Just takes and after takes, takes, uh, takes, rook takes c2. I mean, here, okay, I'm only up a pawn, but I'm going to be up two pawns soon. And this is just completely winning again. But uh, yeah, what my opponent uh, did in the game um, was even worse than all these alternatives. My opponent played rook c1, and I don't know what he missed exactly, but uh, this just loses an exchange on the spot. And yeah, I attacked the knight on e3, and yeah, now I just have a, a pretty easy combination to win the knight by force. I just played g5, check. My opponent goes uh, king e4 to keep defending the knight, but now just uh, rook e8 check, king d4, and here after I win the knight, I'm up a rook for rook, and my opponent resigns, so pretty um, easy game and pretty comfortable, and this just goes to show that uh, you can win quick games even with uh, queen trades, you know, in like equal type of endgames, so yeah, I wouldn't really recommend you shying away from this type of positions because they are really um, interesting and they can uh, actually improve your chess if you only like like to play attacking games you should look into these type of positions for sure to try it out but uh, okay this was the game pretty clean one and uh, right now i'm gonna take a little break from uploading videos because i'm gonna go into a tournament a seven day tournament so yeah i'll be back somewhere around christmas with another video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.